Good afternoon, everyone. While looking at the water resources of Kyrgyzstan and the aquifers surrounding the nation, there's so much going on with water resources, trading dams to have access to the aquifers, and limiting water downstream for more agriculture. It's all about these aquifers here, which brought me to look for other water bodies in the country. Chatur Kol, which brings you to Tashrabat. Very unusual geology in the mountains where that's placed. Is it a dolmen? Is it a temple of remembrance? The gates welcome you deep into a hiding spot from winds. Tashrabat's been rebuilt many times. Maybe it was a reminder from those who witnessed the event. Electrical discharge, electric geology from the lab to the crust of the planet. And with 30,000 plus petroglyphs down valley of this event, how would you represent plasma dancing in the skies on a rock surface? Concussion wave would accompany this event. Radio blast, bringing in supersonic ground winds with an updraft. Reflected shock waves are going to channel like a nozzle, standing waves of pulverized earth reforming in the low valleys, on the top of the mountain ranges, and what looks like the electrical arc itself striking. This is a once in a 12,000 year event here, Younger Dryas. But we're heading into a grand solar minimum right now, once in a 400 year event. Gas giants are lining in a single quadrant in the solar system, not seen since 1486 or 79 AD. If it's a light version of what was experienced in Kyrgyzstan, electrically, our cloud cells are going to go out of their positions. So will the jet streams. And this will interfere with the ability to grow food in the plant and harvest dates we know. We should be talking about this, but perhaps that's the reason for so many distractions around the world. President Biden's economic decisions are gripping our nation and everyday Americans are watching as their purchasing power continues to fall further and the uncertainty of what's ahead in 2022. And this administration has moved forward with $6.6 .6 trillion of spending. And next on the agenda is the greatest tax hike in generations. Economists are comparing our current inflationary environment to 1970s inflation. And if you look back, gold was up 20x and silver 37x from 1970 to 1980. Learn how simple it is to add physical gold and silver to your portfolio ahead of the rise in inflation and predicted price rises. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. Call 1-800-356-4470 and get a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. In the previous video, which I linked below, I was following the movement of water and water rights across Kyrgyzstan and neighboring countries, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, it's all about the border water and who has access to aquifers and above ground water rainfall. Kyrgyzstan comes out and says we are going to limit the amount of outbound flow. They need electricity and more water for agriculture. That's above ground water resources. So what's the instant move that's happening now? The Silk Road has been traversed for what, 4,000 years? These countries in Central Asia would definitely know the cycles. So what is it about this largest body of water that they're so concerned about? And also trading this dam for land-based access to the transboundary aquifer. A bit zoomed in here. Right down near Osh. So is it that they're going to trade river flow for aquifer access to still be able to do agriculture and greenhouses in these drier areas? Whatever it is. Something's happening lightning fast in this transition into the grand solar minimum. I was looking around for different lakes and water bodies, found Chatir Coal right on the border with China. But when you're looking around the geology, the placement of a sacred site here, Tashrabat, pin on the map, actually has a second 
sister feature. So I'm wondering if something's there that's sort of undiscovered. But Tash Rabat, fortress slash dolmen slash place of worship, carved into the side of a mountain, enter at night, enter at day, area here on the map for you, central in the south of the country, mountainous, but the story goes this was to keep camels for traders along the Silk Road. I'm not buying that for one single second. Still a religious spot, still highly revered. 30 some plus rooms going deep into the mountain. Refuge spot or something built after an event in case it returns. So looking at the area around Tashrabat, electric geology as far as the eye can see. Whether it's standing waves from electricity or wind, deconstructing and then reconstructing the landscape. Shout out to Thunderbolts Project, Andy Hall. Yes, there are people listening to your message. Electric geology, electric universe. This one, I think, falls into the electrical category of plasma discharge onto the planet's surface. You can walk out after a strike point where the charge, where the current is flowing. And if you bring it on to the topography of Kyrgyzstan, I'm really going to laugh if you tell me that's erosion right there from water or wind. It's too perfectly placed. And you see the standing waves right about the 3 o'clock position come in off the crop grow zone, and you can see the direction of the wind that was pulling along with the current flow. So if this truly was witnessed, there would have been people that would have left signs and said, whoa, this reshaped the society. If you start to see these signs around the skies, another one of these events could be inbound. Please beware. And for the longest time, people couldn't understand what all these symbols meant. But now in the modern age with plasma laboratory experiments, we can start to match up shapes, current inflows, change quite easily. And a lot of people have just been baffled by the circles. Is it the coronal discharge? a massive nova, or something that they saw actually increase vibratory state and change in front of them, like they do in Sapphire Project, Star in a Jar. But interestingly, Kyrgyz Post puts a plasma petroglyph right in as a new issuance. Now, if there were this kind of event with planetary lightning or continental plate to continental plate, massive bolts screaming across thousands of miles of our sky, there would be a massive shock wave that would hit. And as it did, supersonic winds would start creating pillar updrafts, like you see after the explosions in the desert, the nuclear tests. Everything's pulled upward three, four hundred miles well above the atmosphere. And as that's replaced with the supersonic winds pick up even further, 800, 900 miles per hour. And as these winds are rushing in, these shockwave patterns are taking formation as the materials are redeposited. It's always this triangular shape that you see with these buttresses and wind patterns perpendicular to the blast. So the telltale sign is what you're seeing here, these stacked pyramid shapes. Because if you were to witness something like this, you would carve it on the rocks. And now we can see the state change, what they were trying to represent on a solid medium. Some of these are quite easy to show, whether it be the antlers or the horns, they were depicting the same changes. And if you were to look south from this area, you would come to a place called Similutash, where there's 30,000 petroglyphs in two valleys. They definitely witnessed this firsthand and had given us warning on the rocks. And then it puts a different context into what was built on the mountains as a place of worship and refuge. The story goes it's for camels here and ant pack animals in the Silk Road, but that is a place of sacredness. The stories say one thing, but the actual usage says something else. Now back to these shock waves funneling, like a nozzle of a hose, depositing material with the vibratory pattern. Very distinct once you start to know what it looks like. And if you look at different shock wave behaviors, you're getting a lot of stacking in the same exact expansion forms. The same standing wave forms at the base of the mountain range leaning up to Tash Rabat. Also, when you reach the apex of the range there, you see the same standing waves. 
But here's where it gets a little bit interesting. This looks like the discharge point of the plasma itself hitting the earth as a discoloration and heating had reconstituted the elements and then melted them into this glaceous form. But you can see the discharge and the wind pattern both at the same time. And in that darker green, the electrical filaments are quite visible there. Just spinning it, looking in a different direction of the same topography, but just at the base of that strike. And the mineral elements look as if they've been separated and then came back into those veins. And if you look through the center of this image, you'll see the same updraft deposition and layer creation. And other areas to the east or west of that range leaning up to Tosh Rabat, also incredibly interesting geology. Just don't see this. Filamentary electrical currents going into the crust in the winds layering and reforming what's now the river valleys. So think about it like this. The electrical discharge comes in from space or from another continental plate and discharges over this point in Kyrgyzstan, sending out electrical current, rearranging the crust along with the supersonic winds. But what would be at the very end of the terminus point of these electrical current filaments where they burn themselves out, literally, and the charge doesn't go any further? That's the terminus point. Something just like this, littering the landscape. Kyrgyzstan, there's millions of these. But then you have the shockwave with the wind, and this is just the very finest of material, like dust, if you will. Sand is blowing through the air, and where it terminates, you might see something similar to this. But that's at the very furthest reaches of the end of the shock wave, where it would deposit loose gravel. So what you've seen here is occurrences and accounts of what had happened during the Younger Dryas, 12,000 years prior. This is a massive event. What if we come into a lighter version of something, electromagnetically changing our atmosphere, the crust itself creating more volcanoes and earthquakes? This grand solar minimum is here now. And at the same time in 2024, we have a planetary alignment of the gas giants, all four of them in a single quadrant of the solar system. And the best match is 79 AD, and the second best match is 1486 that's it in the last 2,000 years, and we're here again. You could expect that the cloud cells will be disrupted on the planet and go into different flows. So will the jet streams. But it's really about our ability to gauge food planting and harvesting dates. Because we've hit a year globally where agriculture has been tested, to say the least. And next year there will be fertilizer shortages, diminishing yields, in addition to what the Earth's weather is going to throw at us again, 2024, will those four gas giants have their own second magnetic field enough to intercouple with Earth in its regular combination of the sun's electromagnetic field? Perhaps this is why there's so many distractions happening now. This is the real reason for change. It's all about the food. 2022 is the year of understanding for most on the planet you're going to want to get yourself some food prices are going to exponentially rise through next year so whatever you buy especially if it's longer term storable foods it's going to be way cheaper now in my opinion than it will next year with the research i do three month emergency food supply and adapt 2030 25 year shelf life give yourself peace of mind knowing you have storable foods keeping your family's more grand solar minimum prepared I do thank you for watching. All the links are in the description box below. I have one more video in this series, and I'm going to combine it into the full one hour and 15 minute movie. That's coming shortly, but I will see you next time.